favorite things to do is to jam. Hi, everybody. Welcome to True Fire Live. I'm John Finn. Um, I've got a, if, uh, I've got a couple of courses on truefire.com uh, if you're not familiar uh, with me and what I do. One of the courses I have is, uh, is called uh, Melodic Modal something. Melodic Modal Playing improvis Melodic Modal Improvisation. Um, and the other one is called Improvisation 
target notes and uh that's my latest course um that was actually sort of the what would the uh, focus of what i wanted to talk about uh tonight um you know the when uh you know one of my one of my favorite analogies for playing guitar is um well if you're if I'm a, I'm a rock guitar player by uh I came up as a rock guitar player initially and uh you know one of the first things I learned how to do was like okay, so here's a power chord at the fifth fret and there's my pentatonic scale <laughs> And then if the power chord moved up to the A fret for C minor, I could just play the same licks at the eighth fret instead of the fifth. Or if it went down to G minor, okay. So you know that was kind of where, where you know where I started. And with a lot of rock tunes, even though the chords are moving around a little bit, sometimes what hap very often what happens is the chords will all sort of revolve around a single key center. So in many cases, you just have to know what key you're in and then you're sort of off and running. As long as you're playing within the notes in the key, you know, for the most part, any note you hit that's within that key is gonna be right with whatever chord you're playing on. Um, you know, but of course, not all songs are, are, are like that. Every once in a while, you'll you'll hit what I, uh, you'll encounter what I refer to as head tilt chords. Like, you know, you've, and so this chord's in the key, this chord's in the key, this chord's in the key, and then this chord's kind of mostly in the key, but not totally. And there's a couple of notes in the chord that aren't quite in the key, and what do you do with those? And, you know, of course, initially I was taught, well, learn the scales, learn the arpeggios, um, you know, learn chord tones, and you know and all that kind of stuff and, and every time i tried to do that like for example if i was you know playing playing an a minor to, to g to f you know of course if i do it from the point of view of scales it's a aeolian then g mixolydian then f lydian Okay, and, or or A minor arpeggio, G major, F major, right? So if I was uh, soloing over something like that, and then we back up to G. If I'm thinking scales, I'm going to play. Okay. I mean, that's fine, but <laughs> it's not really saying much any, of anything other than, wow, you're sure you know your scales. So, okay, so let's, let's try some arpeggios. I mean, even then, it still kind of has a somewhat schooled feeling to me. Now, you know, I, 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 I should say that, you know, I'm a big fan of learning everything you can about the instrument. Um, but as an improviser, I never want to sound academic. You know, in other words, you know, the, the, the main thing I, I want listeners to to sense is what the story is within the improvisation. I, you know, I want I, you know I want the the listener to just sort of get lost in the music. I don't care if anybody thinks I'm I'm a good player or a lousy. I mean, I hope they think I'm a good player, but um, I, I'm not out to impress anybody as much as as I want to get like sort of emotionally involved in the music and I want to draw the listener into the you know like the emotional content of the story that's happening. So. Um, you know, so, so one of the methods that I use, I, I call target notes. And, and basically what it is, is, you know, if I've got a chord progression, uh, what I'm going to do is, is, is I'm going to choose a note to land on for each chord, particularly 
the chords that aren't in the key, the, uh, of, of the main part of the key. I don't know if you can hear that, but the train just went by. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, so in this example, A minor, let's say I pick A. Then for G, let's say I pick, so like, let's say I pick B. Okay. Then for F, I pick C. Then for G, I pick D. So I've got this nice little. So. So in other words, the, the main thing that I'm trying to avoid is I don't want my playing to get so noodly that I'm just playing random licks that I've practiced a thousand times. Now I'm not now I'm just running scales and running licks and not really doing anything that's like interesting or advancing. So one of my favorite analogies around that is I like to think about what a third baseman in a or excuse me, a right fielder in a baseball team needs to be good at. A right fielder in a baseball team needs to be able to, to, to do two main skills. One, run really fast. Two, throw really far. But not only throw really far, but be able to throw in a way that he you know, catches the ball, or well, runs, catches the ball, and then throws it to whoever he wants to catch the ball. In many cases, it's either going to be the second baseman, maybe the shortstop, maybe the third baseman, maybe the catcher. And in the instant he catches it, he has to decide who he's going to throw it to and then throw the ball so that the person catching the ball just has to lift their glove and the, uh, and, and the ball just kind of lands in their glove. Now, he's got to think about all those things and be able to do all of that while he's about ready to fall after he's ca caught this amazing ball after running halfway across the field. So there's kind of a lot to think about. Um, and amazing baseball happens when, when, when you see that. You see the guy running like crazy, catch the ball, almost falls over, throws the ball out of his hand, and somehow magically the catcher just kind of goes, boop, and the guy's out. So, um, so on the surface, when you watch it happen, it looks really easy. But the truth of the matter is, those guys that play that game at that level, they're practicing those skills over and over and over and over again. So um, let's see. Did I hear Julie? Julie, is that you? Okay. Well, I thought I heard somebody come in. Um, Julie might be joining me late, uh, a little bit later to play some rhythm guitar. But in the meantime, um, one of the things that, 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 that I wanted to demonstrate, uh, what, here's a... A great example of this. Um, there was a. Um, oh, hi, Julie. Hi. Um, hi. So, hi. Come on, come on in. I forgot to get a chair. Yes, okay, so the, this. I think there's one right here, actually. Okay. So I'm gonna bring Julie in. This is Julie. She's gonna come in. And she's gonna play some rhythm guitar for me. Um, I don't want to mess up the camera. No, you're fine. So, um, so a great example that I was thinking about was the 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 the, the, uh, the solo that David Gilmore does in Time. Now, this is such a great example because anytime you hear David Gilmore interviewed, he'll tell you, you know, look, I don't know anything about music theory. Um, I don't know the notes, the name of the notes of the guitar. I just kind of play whatever I feel, and I don't think about it. Um, you know, I don't I don't follow the rules of music theory. I just kind of play whatever I feel and. It just comes out because it's because I, I'm magical, and um, so so one time I, I, I did a the kind of a full analysis of his solo in time to find out if there was anything contained in that solo that uh, that, that that might reveal some things that he might be thinking about. So anyway, so this is Julie. Julie's gonna be playing rhythm guitar for me. Um, can, so can you play an F sharp minor chord? Good. So everybody can hear that okay? Do I need to plug in? Uh, no, I don't think so. We got a microphone right there. All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's see. turn around over here and use the computer to, to change some settings. Groovy. Okay. So the chord progression for the time solo is, is, is F sharp minor. Okay. 
followed by A, followed by E, back to F sharp minor. That happens four times. Okay, then it goes D major seven to A major seven. Okay, same thing. Oh, I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Step on something. Yeah. Uh, then it's D major seven to C sharp minor to B minor to E. Okay. Now. Did your why am I not plus? hearing anything? No, the chord's there. Can I put something on there? On the accent? I hope not. Oh, wait. I think I know what happened. There it is. There we go. Okay. Perfect so, time. anyway, so F sharp minor. So, F sharp minor. A. E. F sharp minor. Okay. All right, so. So I'm going to play the solo now. So here, here's the solo that David Gilmore did. Okay. One, two, three, and. <laughs> solo um so um so one of the things i started noticing was that so 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 the licks he plays in the first in the first go around for the f sharp minor a e f sharp minor he starts with f sharp minor plays the note f sharp which is the root of the f sharp minor chord then he goes to the c sharp with the a chord now the c sharp is the third of the a, a, a chord then now he plays D, which is the fifth of the E chord, then back to F sharp. So to review, the first time through he plays F sharp, which is the root, C sharp is the third of A, B, which is the fifth of E, then back to F sharp, which is the root of the F sharp chord. Okay, so the first time he says plays one, three, five, and then one over each chord. Second time, uh, let's see. Same thing, root uh, F sharp to C sharp. Then it goes up. The high note, now you get still on the A. So that's C sharp. That's the, the third, again, of the A chord. Then it bends up to a B over the E chord. That's the fifth. And back in the F sharp minor, which is the F sharp of the F sharp minor chord, which is the root again. So the second time he plays the root, the fifth, the uh, third, then the fifth, then back to the root. And the third time, so that high note, that's an F sharp. That's a well, F sharp, which is the root of the F sharp minor chord. So that, bending up to a C sharp, that's the third of the A chord. E chord. Then it's down to a B, which is the fifth of the, of the E chord. Then, um, let's see. And it ends back down to the F sharp again, so that's the root. So the third time he plays root, third, fifth, and then back to the root, 
of the course. So it's the same formula every time. It's just that every time he does it, he does it in a slightly higher register. Okay. Then the last time, that's F sharp again. That's C sharp. That's C sharp again. That's B to the fifth of E. That's F sharp. Okay? So, um, so, so what that means is that I can take that same information and sort of re-engineer the solo. So one, two, three. So as you can see, you know, one, one of the things that's cool about that is you, you copy somebody else's solo, you pull from that some of the things you think they might have been thinking about, and then you sort of include those same ideas, but kind of frame it in your own way. Now, I'm not going to pretend that the solo that I just played would, it would, would compete with his as being, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, that solo is just as good. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that you you know you can take something like that sort of pull the information out of it and then kind of go on and make your own thing mm -hmm. so that that's kind of cool um so let me see uh one of the things i want to check on um let's see that i've got this computer back here behind julie and if uh let me see someone asked if we take requests for music videos. you guys take requests for music videos no, sorry. <laughs> uh, check out John Finn's True Card for Fire Course from Jeff Sheets. Um, thanks, Master. Oh, my yeah. God. Play some blues. Um, blues? REO Speedwagon. REO Speedwagon? Nah. Probably not yeah. today. Shame the, shame the True Fire uh, bar is blocking out the guitar. Oh, uh, I could maybe turn that off, huh? Let me see if I can turn that turn that off. Okay, did that go away? I think I still see it. Can can the big blue bar be removed or no? Uh, are you the uh, are you the John Finn that works the blues improv book I own? Yes, I am. Uh, I am one and the same. Um, Someone said, but the girl enhance what the bar is messing up. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it would be nice to actually see what he's doing. Uh -oh. Sound good? Has it sound okay? I hope. Is, is it not? Oh, it's the blue thing that's covering up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. All right. So. I don't know how to turn. Um. Okay. So. So 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 target notes. You know the base. The basic idea is that 
you know, if you're working with a chord progression, um, here's a really simple example. Okay, if, um, if if I'm playing D minor seven, then B flat seven. Okay, so let's maybe do a funky sort of. Not yet. Okay, yeah. Good. Okay, now, you can hear that you know the b flat 7 is a nice companion to the to, to the d minor 7 so the simple way to do that is just solo over d minor 2 3 Okay, but if you do it that way, you're missing a really cool little nugget, right? And what I mean by that is that when you play a B flat dominant seventh chord, the notes are B flat, F, A flat, D, F, and B flat from bottom to top. Okay, now, in the, now if you're playing in the key of D minor, um, you're playing D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, D. So it's a, called a D minor scale. Right? Now, if I play that same scale um, over the B flat 7th chord, most of the notes are going to fit. Right? Most of the notes are going to fit, but not all of them are going to fit. One of the notes that's not going to fit is the A natural in the D minor scale. Yeah, that note doesn't quite fit the B flat 7 because the B flat 7 has the A flat. So an easy fix is to play the D minor scale, but with the A flat instead. Okay? So, target notes. Play the D minor chord. D e flat. Back to D minor. Now, if I was to get technical about that, what I'm doing is I'm playing a D Aeolian scale over the D minor chord, and then a B flat Lydian flat seven over the B flat Lydian over the B flat seventh chord. Okay, but if I think that way, what's going to um, you're going to hear scales, right? right? Mm -hmm. Three, four. <laughs> Right? Right? Yeah. I don't want to improvise using scales. I mean, I use scales, but to me, scales are like letters of the alphabet. So when you speak to somebody, you don't say, hey, you know, hey, Johnny, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Like, nobody does that. You, you take the letters and you mix them up to formulate words, which formulate sentences, which formulate thoughts, which tell a story. So that analogy really holds for music. And that's the thing that, you know, for me, I, I find that that dynamic uh, pretty pretty important. I I love having you have never here to talk with me about this because you know it's so I hard to so talk to a to camera. <laughs> <laughs> you have kind of a lot to say about it, don't you? So anyway. <laughs> so anyway. Camera. Um. So. Um. <laughs> Okay. 
So, so the basic idea is to find where all the A flats are, and then when she changes from D minor seven to B flat seven, look for the A flats, and if you're anywhere near that range, lean on that on, on the on the A flat over the B flat seven chord. Okay, That's to nice. sort of highlight the fact that this is the note that's now different from the rest of the notes in the D minor scale. Okay, now, now whenever I teach things like that, it's also important to realize that, you know, that's not a rule that you should follow all of the time. Instead, it's the kind of thing that, you know, if you want this kind of sound, this is a great way to get it. Okay. Um, so let's see what, what time is it um thank you okay so uh, now this can also work in in, in in like a really like even in a one chord vamp sometimes when it's a one chord vamp i'm going to play a backing track that's, that's just d9 okay. okay so you can play play along with it if you want so it's d9 okay now if it's one chord like this one of the things that's going to happen is that if, if you don't have a strategy for it you're going to run out of legs really quickly so what i like to do in, in a case like this is to pick a note to kind of center around and then do all the ideas i can think of around that note then move on to another note and then mess around with that and then keep going mess around with different notes okay so i'm going to start with this one then 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 this one okay So, so the basic formula is I'm just picking one note to focus in on for a little while, then move on to the next one, then move on to the next one. Okay, so uh, you know, so that's a good thing for really simple chord progressions. It can also work in more compl complicated chord progressions. Um, let me see. You can you can either play play this one or not. Let me see. There's another question. Uh, was there more to the bass? Baseball analogy, other than practice hard, 
and a lot. Uh, was there more than uh, to the baseball analogy other than practice hard and a lot? Well, yes, practice hard and a lot on really simple things. I think that that's the main message, you know, and, and that when something is like beautifully done, it looks easy, you know, and it looks easy out of the repetition of the person practicing it. So, yeah, so I, so I guess I guess the main message is practice a lot. <laughs> um, uh, Jeff is that you should know. Okay, I think what John meant is that Jeff is that you should know the situation of the game and do what's best in the next move. Yeah. Yeah, Strategy. get this jams on. Strategy. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm hoping uh, see the guitar as a play field. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that the fretboard is more clearly visible. Yes. All right, so I'm going to show another... Uh, Example. This one's called this. This one. Uh, this is a nice example. It's uh, the chord, the chords are C minor, then C minor major seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like then. Yeah. Yep. Then C minor seven to F nine, then F minor seven. To A flat nine to G seven, then that's for two bars. Okay, then C minor, C minor major seven, C minor seven to F nine. Then instead of going to the F minor this time, we can go straight to the A flat nine to G seven to C minor. Then then G seven sharp nine. Okay, so let's let's hear the chord progression first a couple of times. So because it's important to know what you're playing on top of. Three, mm, mm, four, mm, mm. minor major seven, C minor seven, F nine, F minor seven, A flat nine, G seven. Now here you can play G7 sharp 5 also if you want, C minor, minor major 7, C minor 7, F9, A flat 9, G7, C minor, G7 sharp 9, okay? sort of offer the illusion that I'm just sort of free flowing over the chords but the reality is is, is you know I'm, 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 the, I'm the right fielder thinking about like what where do I want the ball to land once I've thrown it okay so um, now in this case there's two chord there's one chord that really stands out in the chord progression and it's the A flat 9 Okay, the first time the A flat nine chord happens, it happens in the sixth bar of a phrase. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, and then eight, right? Then the second half, it happens on the fifth bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. And that's eight. Okay? So 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 one one of the things I'm aiming for is that when I get to the A flat nine, I'm gonna feature the note G flat. Play an A flat nine chord. It's a nice note over that chord, isn't it? Yeah. So part of the concentration is knowing when the A flat nine chord comes and then having the foresight to sort of hit that note when the A flat chord comes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a bit so just just like a right fielder, you're 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 hitting the, a moving target essentially. Okay, so in order to hit that, you kind of have to phrase up to it so it sounds like the G flat is like the next most logical note to play. But the thing is, if you practice this approach enough, you'll start just sort of hearing things like that come. And f what I like is that, you know, f for me, it sort of makes me feel like uh, the, 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 the improvisations I play are a little bit more... Uh, you know, they, they sound less noodly. I mean, for me personally, my least favorite thing is listening to somebody noodle. You know what I mean? Because because I don't feel like there's any conscious effort into it. No story being told other than look at me sort of wake, waggle my fingers around the fretboard. And there's a lot of people who are really good at that. But for me personally, it's just not that interesting. So because it's not interesting to me to listen to somebody else do that, I assume that it would be very uninteresting for me to do that. So I try not to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so, so here it comes again. So C minor. So I'm going to play C minor mostly. Then F minor. Here's a way to practice it. You pick a series of target notes, okay, and then you and then you play the practice by playing the target notes, and then you build the phrases around the target notes. So here's the target notes first, and C. Play phrases around those target notes. Thank you. 
Okay, now, you know, so runs like that, runs like that are just sort of based on either the scale or the arpeggio or the pentatonics of whatever whatever the master key is, in this case, C minor. So, you know, C minor pentatonic. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, one of the things I practice a lot is, you know, taking minor pentatonic. But one of the things I don't do is I don't really practice them going across the fretboard this way too much because... I don't hear a lot of phrases being played where they stay in position. What I find that ha tends to happen is I'll play a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, so... So that's all C minor pentatonic. But and that's only going to work really over the pure C minor chords, you know, or the C minor seven chords. But it's not necessarily going to work as well over the C minor major seven chord because play the chord. So, so play that note, the odd man note, the, the odd note out. The, it's the major seven. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that note isn't right so i'm going to try to feature that one too so i mean at the end of the day it's really about listening to what to, to what you're playing listening to what other people are playing and then just finding ways to sort of connect everything um while you're improvising and trying to tell a story. Now, of course, it's not easy. It's going to take a lot, take, take a while to kind of put it all together. And I still stink at it. I've got a long way to go. Um, he says that. Um, okay, so let me see. I'm going to check in with some of the questions. Okay, see the Okay, cool, I see that. Jam play membership is up in a week considering jumping ship to True Fire. You should jump ship to True Fire. That's a good idea. You should. Uh, why should I? Uh, if this so is not a good time reasons. to ask, I understand. Well, I actually so. I don't know anything about uh, about jam play. The, the only actually the only thing I do uh, do know about jam play is uh, the, the only thing, literally, that I know is that the people that I've known that have gone over there to film, what they do is they'll they they pay the artist a flat rate to go and shoot the video, and then after that, that artist's uh, obligation to 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 jam play is now finished. And what I what I really like about True Fire is that they work really hard to sort of maintain like like a uh, like a real ongoing relationship with you know with with all the educators and artists that uh that produce content um you know i it's it's not uncommon i i get at least a couple of emails a month asking me about about one thing or another or i might just get like a gang email for, for the, that's uh you know that, that's addressed to all the uh true fire artists but you know and then i'll maybe hear from somebody in the company Maybe once in a month. I mean, it's definitely a community. And how many, geez, how many artists do they have? So I mean, they've got hundreds uh, of artists and thousands of courses. Um, Incredible. Yeah, it's. I mean, they've got they've got so much content up. It's it, it's ridiculous. I'm and always looking for new. Yeah, always looking for new content. And they're also look you know looking for different ways 
you know, to uh, to, to present the con content. They're not only just doing instructional videos, but they're doing live events like this. Um, they're they're also doing interactive courses. They're doing uh, you know you know online online guitar lessons, yeah. uh, online courses, a lot of different things. So I hope that um, answers at least some of your questions. Um, but um, oh yeah, and the Jeff Jeff Sheets, who is one of the um, uh, True Fire gurus and a really talented guitar player, musician, and dog trainer, um, <laughs> is uh, is is on. I think you can you can see him there. Um, hey Greg, feel free to shoot me an email. Happy to give you some thoughts. Um, Jeff at TrueFire.com. Let me see. You always targeting the root of the chord. Uh, chord change or can it be the third or the fifth? So this is a question from, let me read the whole question, from Red Wallace TM NC952. Uh, the question is, are you always targeting the root of the chord change or can it be the third or the fifth? And the answer is no, it's often not the root. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the target notes that I choose um, over chord is simply a note that sounds good with the chord. Okay. Now, in many cases, the, the the root will often work. I mean, it's a it's it's a perfectly viable strategy. Like in time. Yeah, like like we found it in 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 the time solo that we did earlier. Uh, but the third, the, the thing that's cool about playing the third of the chord is that the third of the chord usually is a big part plays a big part in defining the character of the chord. You know, so like if you play 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 A minor play A major and then play A minor right after. Okay, so now play a strum pattern. You go from A major to A minor. So we're talking the third to the minor third. Yeah. Okay. I get it. So um, I switched and find. Okay, somebody Paul Paul Lou says I switched and find True Fire has better content. Uh, is this live? Yes, it's live. I want to get away from the JP chat gameplay chat time time waster. Huh. Okay. Um, I got a woman. She's long and tall. She sleeps in the kitchen with her feet in the hall. I assume. Those are lyrics. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> thanks for the answer. Okay. Um, All right. Going on. So let me see. Uh, what, what should, should we play something? Sure. Who would you like to play? Who do you feel like playing? Okay. Uh, how about want to do a blues? Sure. Okay. So somebody asked for some blues. Now. Um, so let's say we're doing it in G. Okay, so the target notes, I'm going to play the third of the G chord. Then for the four chord, I'm going to play the flat seven. It's B flat. Then back to the major third. Then back to the flat third again. Back to the major third. Then for the five chord, I'm going to play C the seven. Then, then the major third. Okay, so one, two, three, and. So, you know, so, so by doing it that way, it kind of gives me sort of an outline to, to think about while I'm soloing over something like that. Okay. Now, I can sit here all day long and, and show 
400 different variations of that, but then we'll all be asleep by the time I'm finished. Um, or we'll be excited. Yeah, or be excited. Yeah, maybe. Some of us. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Mason's Blues, type in here. Me play my blues. You'll see. Um, good, Tom. All right, I'll check it out later. Um, Do you want to play a song? Or are you thinking just a blues? Or is that the blues? No, yeah, that's all. Well, trying to think of what. Uh, trying to think of what 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 what, what might be fun. Um, Okay, so here's one. So it's uh, B flat seven okay. to D minor seven to G nine to A seven sharp nine. A seven. Yeah. Yeah. So it's two two measures for each chord. Okay. B flat D. Yeah. So here's the chord progression: B flat seven to D minor seven. G9, A7 sharp 9. D minor, G9, A7 sharp 9. Now, the scales I'm going to use is going to be B plus Lydia plus 7. D minor. G Lydia flat 7. A minor pentatonic. Okay? So as you can see, you know, the scales are really only going to get you so far. So the target notes I chose are going to be A flat to the end. A to B with a G9 to C. Okay, so the solo over. about uh, about a minute or so um, you're such a great teacher thank you you're such a great teacher this is from Pedro oh. Miranda um, your advanced modern rock guitar improvisation book is such an incredible book um, thank you Pedro I wrote that a long time ago boy 1999 if you can believe it you never um, really got a start. And, well 
you know, I wrote the book be because I had gone to, um, eight semesters to Berklee College of Music, and I came away knowing a lot more than I did when I started. And then, but there was all kinds of, after I, after I graduated, I spent a lot of time sort of practicing to try to digest everything I'd learned. And then I started figuring out some things that my teachers didn't show me that I wish they did show me because I felt like um, if they'd showed me those things earlier, then I would have had a chance to, you know, so I sort of, implement you know, them. yeah, I, it, I would have been able to implement them sooner. So, you know, the book was really written based on the idea that, like, these are all the things that I learned that I learned on my own that I wished somebody had shown me, but I hadn't seen it written in a book. So that was sort of the idea of, of writing the book. But but thank you. It was it was a, a definitely a labor of love to to, to write that. Um, lots of great topics and concepts here. Thank you. Um, really, Hayden Fitzpatrick says really enjoying this. Thank you. Thank you all for the great insight. Uh, going to go play now. Awesome. Yay. Uh, saludos de Buenos Aires from, oh, it's from, uh, uh, saludos from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Hey. I've never been to Argentina. Um, get me a gig there. We'll come down. How's that? <laughs> and I'll learn Spanish in the meantime. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, I, so I've got a couple of courses on True Fire. Uh, one of them is called Melodic Modal Rock Soloing, and it's basically an approach to organizing scales um, and chord progressions to try to figure out how to piece together chords and scales. Uh, but it's just a chords and scales relationship uh, video course. Uh, and then the second one, is, um, which this material is sort of taken from, uh, is called Improvisation Target Notes. And in that, the Target Notes course uh, there are 13 different chord progressions, and, um, you know, so basically what I do is I break down, you know, here are the chords, here are the scales that go with the chords, here are the arpeggios that go with the chords, here are the target notes I chose, and then there's a fully transcribed improvised solo for each example, and then there's, and then there's a couple of videos that sort of coach you through improvisation, uh, improvis improvis improvising, uh, improvising your own um, using the target notes provided and of course you know the message in that is that once you start working with target notes you start choosing your own target notes and then you can kind of take it in your own direction I mean really anytime you learn something from somebody else you're not trying to sound like them you want to take those ideas and use them in your own way so with that I think um, again my, my name is John Finn it's been a pleasure um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. This is Julie Morgan. Uh, she's an incredibly talented and obviously beautiful guitar player. Um, you know, living here in the, in the living here in the uh, suburban Boston area, and uh, Julie and I play all the time. So maybe you'll see her again in the future. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Good night.